So we'll take a quick look at <coughs> issues that can come up, uh, about when we're doing sampling. So what what would the purpose of all this be? So keep in mind that we've got some type of population and we want to take a good sample so that when we get our statistics uh, we feel good about saying okay these things could describe the whole uh, population which are parameters right so the purpose here is we want to be able to take the best possible right so the purpose of all this sampling the purpose of, of taking a good sample and having sound methods uh, while we went through all those different types of sampling, some more, you know, uh, appropriate and sometimes, uh, or in some situations than others, the whole idea behind this thing, we want to take a good sample, um, is to basically get uh, the best possible representation of our population, uh, get the best possible representation, uh, a reflection, of our population of interest. And that's the whole idea behind why we want to take good samples, why we want sound sampling methods. So a few issues that can come up, whether it's an issue in how we took the sample or, or maybe just as we're collecting data, some of the problems that might pop up. So the first is if we have some type of volunteer response with our sampling. So a lot of times this would maybe be involved with convenience sampling, which is something we've already discussed is not a good thing. So let's say a radio station asks listeners to call in on their opinions regarding the use of U.S. forces in overseas peacekeeping missions. Well, the issue here is chances are the people uh, that are going to respond are very, very opinionated, right? You're going to get uh, basically a very opinionated uh, group of folks. You're going to get the folks that are very, very for it, very, very against it, but you're probably not going to get a very good pulse of a good chunk of the population, which again, our goal, if we go back and look, right, we want to get the best possible representation of the population of interest. So having people call in is probably not going to be your best bet. That's one of the issues uh, surrounding with convenience sampling. All right. Another problem, you can have under coverage. So let's say the New York Times conducts a telephone survey about uh, collecting opinions about the president. Well, under coverage, exactly what it sounds like. Uh, uh, basically, uh, some part of the you know, our population is missed isn't covered they're they're not out there so what we want to do is make sure we cover everyone well if we're doing phone surveys you know if we're using a telephone book to make these random calls well people that don't have home phones anymore which is a lot of people they only have cell phones uh, we're missing a big population and, and those that don't have a home or maybe they just don't have a phone uh, folks in prison they don't have a phone number all right another one is non-response so maybe uh, this senator he feels really good. He's going to do some random sampling, right? So there's randomly selecting numbers. That's good. Randomness is good. We like that. Um, but sometimes when this is done, right? So he's going to randomly select these people between and make a phone call between 5 and 6 p.m. to determine opinions about how a new policy, uh, you know, he's maybe trying to push this thing through that will increase tax at restaurants. Well, the issue here is we see from 5 to 6 p.m., who's most likely uh, at home? Uh, probably not the people that would be affected by that tax at the restaurants. The people that are at the restaurants that would be most effective aren't even at home, so they're, they're not getting their chance to respond, right? Non-response. They can't be there. Uh, they can't be part of this survey. So again, we're not getting a good look at the entire, we're not getting a good representation of the whole population as a whole, you know? So, uh, and under coverage, non-response, very, very similar. Uh, somewhat interchangeable as well. All right. So the biggest problem with both of these, uh, whether they don't have the chance to respond or, you know, under coverage, they never had a chance basically to be called. Non-response, they never were able to pick up the phone. Maybe that's another way to look at it. 
Well, the issue here is those that don't respond, they might differ a lot from those that do. And then one other uh, response bias. And if you take a look at this, uh, you know, a survey question that asked, do you believe that the forced busing of students long distances to school far from their homes is a policy that should be continued? So basically what's happening is the response to this question is going to be biased because the question is so loaded, right? Forced busing, these long distances far from home, it's a very negative question. And I think a lot of us have had uh, experiences with this where we've seen good and bad uh, questioning techniques and the sad thing is there's a lot of people out there that are going to word their questions and surveys in such a way that uh, you know people uh, are kind of led toward one response or the other.